go ahead and start that um, recording now. Uh, so the format for these will basically be kind of a demo of the tool. I'll show you how to use Kami, what it looks like, what the interface is, all the different things that you can do with it. Um, and then also, in addition to what you can actually do with the tool, how you can mark up your PDF, I'll show you how to actually create a Kami assignment within Google Classroom. So that's like a special thing that's integrated into Google Classroom is you can create a Kami assignment. So I'll show you how to do that. And then I'll also flip over to a test elementary student account and you can see what it looks like from the elementary student perspective and how they will then go into Google Classroom, access the assignment that you assigned and then mark it up and they'll actually be able to submit it right from within the Kami interface. So it's, it's pretty nice. Um, but as I said, if as I'm going, you have any questions or comments, please unmute yourself and just feel free to, to jump in and ask. Um, I'd also like to have some time kind of throughout to talk about how you might think of using it, um, if you have used it with students, if you haven't, but you know, you're kind of thinking through what are some different ways you can use it. Um, we can talk about that too. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so I'm going to share that one first. Okay, um, and you guys see this Kami open from Google Drive, open from computer, is that what you're seeing? Okay, excellent. So the first thing that you have to do um, is you have to actually create a Kami account. And now this is going to be the same for students and for yourselves. So there is a little bit of a student, kind of students and parents potentially have to do this step first before they can use Kami. So you'll go to kamiapp.com, K-A-M-I-A-P-P.com, kamiapp.com, okay? And you will then sign up with Google. So luckily it's, it's at least we can sign in with Google, sign up with Google, so you just click that. This is exactly the same for students. Click sign in with Google. And then they'll be prompted to say, am I a K through 12 school? Am I a university? So that should be pretty straightforward, but they'll have to click K to 12, and then they'll have to click student. I think they can say, I'm a student, I'm a teacher, or I'm an administrator. Obviously you will choose student or teacher, they will choose student. Once they do that, it's just a Google sign in and they're good to go, okay? So they'll never have to, to go through those steps again. Um, and really they might not ever have to even go to kamiapp.com again, if they are only kind of interacting with Kami through Google Classroom. Um, but that's the first step. Now, wonderful news over the weekend is that we are able to push out the Kami extension to all teachers and all students. So originally the direction said students and teachers had to go to the Chrome web store, find the extension, add it which especially for parents and students is kind of confusing. So do not have to do that. All teachers and students now should see the little um, purple K in their browser. Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you have that? Okay, so it was pushed out to students or to teachers. Some of you might've already installed it, but um, so you, in order to use Kami, you need those two things. You need the browser extension, that little purple K, and then you also have to have gone to kamiapp.com and signed up with Google. So teachers and students both have to do that step. And then the extension has now been pushed out, but those two things go together. Um, all right, so the first thing I wanna show you guys is if you wanted to mark up a blank PDF yourself. So we're not gonna look at Google Classroom quite yet. I just wanna show you how, if you wanted to annotate a PDF to then share with students or with others, um, how you would do that. So basically there's two ways that you can open a file and use it with Kami. The first way is, is if you go to this kamiapp.com, you can open a PDF from your Google Drive, from your computer, um, or just something blank. But these are gonna be your two most common, common things. So if you click open from computer, you've got some different options here. If you open from Google Drive, obviously it would open up your Google Drive and you can choose choose an option there. Um, you can also, if you're in your Google Drive, like I am right now, you can open um, 
in a PDF in Kami from Drive without ever having to go to KamiApp.com. So what you would do is you would click on your file and you would right click. So when you right click from your Google Drive, you'll have this open with, you're gonna choose, once you have the extension added, you're gonna see this new little option. So this oh. new little option allows you to annotate with Kami. So if that's what I wanted, I would click, And it opens just like that. So I'm actually gonna close that. That's one that I've already annotated, obviously. So I'm gonna open a different one. Okay, so this is kind of why we went with Cami and why we decided to go ahead and push this out um, is because we were having a lot of requests from especially elementary teachers it seemed like um, that had a lot of uh, PDF worksheets and kind of different kinds of things that they wanted students to be able to interact with. So this is an example. Um, normally a student wouldn't be able to draw on this, but now with Cami, they can. Um, so with this, this is the environment. Um, I'm gonna go through and just kind of show you what all of these different tools do. Um, so over here on the left is my toolbar. I have the option if I go down here, if for some reason I wanted my toolbar on the right, I could click that and it pops over to the right. Maybe you don't care, um, but that's, that's an option that you have. If you don't see the names, it's probably because the little thing is hidden. If you wanna see the names, you just click this little arrow and the little explanations like the descriptions pop up, okay? Um, so first of all, Select text, it, it just allows you to select something, but I, I don't really use that because there's other ways to interact. Um, and so it does have a dictionary feature. So if you have dictionary highlighted, you can then highlight a word and it'll give you a definition. So again, this ex looks exactly the same for you as it does, does for students. You can also do text to speech. And I've had a few people comment that in their opinion, the text-to-speech feature is a little better or a little more natural than um, ReadWrite, Google ReadWrite. So that's just one observation that somebody made. So for text-to-speech, you would just highlight and you can change the speed and all of that. So it does have that text-to-speech feature as well. But the markup, so this is kind of what we're especially excited about, the markups and um, writing on it. So the first markup option is a text highlighter. You can choose the color, and then it's just a simple highlighter tool. You just cut, highlight, and then you let go, and it will highlight your text. You can also highlight an entire box. So that you would just, you see this little kind of cross. I left click, hold, let go, and it'll highlight a whole box. I can also do a strike through. So again, I would just select my text. There we go. And it'll do a strike through. And again, I can change the colors of the strike through. Also, there's an underline. So same thing. Select, let go, and it'll underline. The comment, so the comment features are pretty cool. And I've done this now a couple times for middle school teachers and they were really excited about these different comment features. So the first one is just kind of your normal, kind of like Google Docs um, text box. So if I wanted to make a comment on a student's PDF, I can click and the, when I click it'll leave kind of like a little breadcrumb and then I can type in, um, look at this again, okay? I could also, in that same option, I could do voice typing. So if I don't really am sick of typing my comments, I could actually have a voice typing option. So I could just click the microphone, look at this one again, and it translated what I spoke, okay? Um, you also have the option for voice comments. And so this is where students will actually hear your voice giving the comments. Um, and so this is one of the things that middle school teachers were super excited about. So again, I can, as soon as I click 
and I have voice comments selected, it'll start recording. So just kind of FYI about that. Doesn't give you any like countdown. So I'm gonna click. Now it is recording my voice and a student will actually hear my voice giving the comment. And then I stop and then the student actually can then play my voice comment, okay? And then you also have the option for video comment, <laughs> which is also kind of fun. So same idea, as soon as you click somewhere, your video will start. So make sure you're kind of camera ready as soon as you click it. So let's say I'm gonna click. Uh, so good try, maybe make a little you know, better effort next time. And so now it's like a little video that is saved within this PDF, okay? Um, so that's how you comment. And then there is a screen capture. I haven't really played with this because we have Screencastify, we have other things. So I felt like we didn't necessarily need the, the screen capture, but there is an option for that. Um, but I think you might need a separate extension for that. So that I have to play with a little bit more, um, but we do have Screencastify if you needed to like do a screen capture. All right. And again, if, if I'm saying anything and you had a question about it, just um, let me know. You can unmute yourself and ask. All right, so text box. This is pretty standard. And so if you, if a student wanted to actually type, it's just like a normal text box. You would have it selected. You just click somewhere and the text box appears. And so they could type, you know, their name or whatever. And then just up here, just like any other um, word processing tool, you can change the font, you can change the size, bold, all that kind of stuff. And then you can also, of course, change colors. All right, so equation. This actually will let you insert math symbols into your PDF. So again, you can change you know, the different font sizes, colors. And then if you click on the pie, you've got all these different math symbol options. So I could, you know, whatever that is, just click in there. Um, so math equation, math symbols from here. Drawing is your standard drawing tool. So some students, when they're having to write on a PDF, prefer drawing, like using their fingertips because it's touch screen and, and some, you know, we do too sometimes. Um, so, but then some students prefer to use the mouse or and some students prefer to type and not, you know, answer um, from withdrawing. So like some students might want to draw the answer in here. Okay. So drawing tool, again, pretty standard, different colors you can choose, different widths of your um, brush strokes. You can insert shapes. Uh, the ellipses and the triangles are kind of cool. Like that, and then the triangle. Again, I can change color. The triangle actually gives you the angle, the angle degrees, which is kind of oh. cool. And then same for the, the line. The line will show you kind of the angle. So lots of really nice options here. Uh, eraser, anything that you want to erase, you just click on when, you're, when you've got eraser selected and it'll go away. Uh, you can even insert an image if there's a, an image file that you have in Drive or in um, saved onto your computer. Uh, that you want to insert. Uh, and then if you find yourself needing to sign something, <laughs> you can actually, it'll prompt you the first time, it'll prompt you to um, write your signature and then you can upload that onto your PDF. So it's pretty full service as far as this annotation tool goes. It's like any way you can imagine annotating something, you can do it with Kami. Um, you will see this little yellow thing that says trial ends in 17 days. That is true at the moment. Um, Cami has extended a free, this free upgraded subscription through the end of April, but they left, you know, they had language that was like, um, and then we'll see what happens. So hopefully they'll continue extending this free trial for us um, longer. So basically all of the things you just saw me do, students can do the exact same thing. Their interface is the exact same thing. Um, and then, 
up here at the top, these are different ways that you can then interact with it. So you can print it. What I often do is, is I just click the download. And when you click download, you have different options, okay? You can download it to your actual physical computer, download the file. You can say, I wanna get rid of all of these annotations. I just want my original file back. Or you can save it with annotations and it'll save kind of a copy. It says here, Kami export, tell time on clocks, okay? So this is a copy. Um, or you can do annotations only export. I'm not 100% sure what that is, but I think maybe that's just the markups. It's not the actual document. So most often you will choose the middle one. It's the PDF that you just marked up. Um, and so you can just click begin export and then, or you could save it to Google Drive. Um, so these are your options. And so again, this is if you want to create a new annotated PDF that you're gonna then send with your kids. If you're gonna send them um, and attach in Google Classroom a blank PDF that you want them to annotate, you don't have to do any of this, right? Um, Cause you're gonna just at attach a blank PDF. So let's just take a minute here and does anybody have any comments or questions or ideas about how they themselves might annotate a PDF or, or have students do so? What I find it useful is uh, that sometimes we find a lot of materials in English, so it will be useful for me to just annotate in Spanish or mm -hmm. I have the two-way dual. So sometimes it's hard to do my lesson plans. I do it in both languages for some things. So these will solve many problems. <laughs> okay, great, excellent. That's a great idea. I think it'll be super useful for math because right now I've been retyping math problems in a Google Doc so kids can uh, um, edit it. So it's gonna save me a lot of time. Yes. Somebody I'll just asked, um, can you annotate on a slide presentation? So no, so if you, let's say I'll show you when I show you um, Google Classroom and you wanna attach a PDF, you cannot attach anything except for a PDF for, for a CAMI assignment. You can't annotate on a PDF or on a Google Slideshow, but you can download a Google Slideshow as a PDF file. So it's just gonna be like one long running document, which you can then annotate. But no, you can't actually like annotate on uh, on anything but a PDF. Alicia, this tutorial has been super helpful. Were you planning on putting together any video that we can post for the first the students to use, like a very simplified version of this? Yeah, no, I think I, I think I made one already. I think it's so it, I've got the YouTube channel, um, which I will pull up here. <clears throat> and there's a cami playlist. And so one of the videos, here's the Kami playlist. Whoops. Um, it's called For Students, How to Use Kami. And so it's a uh, shorter and it's more basic. It does still say in the beginning, like you have to go and, and add this extension. That's not true anymore. Um, but everything else in there is what I've just shown you, but just kind of quicker. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Does the video and audio recording get sent automatically? Um, you mean like if I added it and I wanna get rid of it? I think, yeah, if I um, did it and I decided not to uh, use these, I can just exit and then they'll get rid of it. Um, I, you know, it's possible that students might have already seen it um, by the time I, I get rid of it. But, and I think possibly if I save it and export it, I may not be able to get rid of them. I think it might, you might only be able to exit and get rid of your comments while you're still kind of in this live cami before you export it. Because I think if you export it, it might kind of flatten it in a way. But I'm not 100% sure, you might check that out. Okay, anything else before I show you um, the Google Classroom integration? Let me just look at the chat quick. Okay, I think I answered those questions. Um, okay, 
Um, I am going to go now over to a Google Classroom, a task Google Classroom that I set up. And I'm going to uh, create a Cami assignment. So I'm going to go to Classwork. Click Create. And I see now I have this new little option called Cami assignment. If I do not see that, it's possibly because I don't have the extension installed. I don't have, but, but again, that shouldn't be an issue now because I think we pushed it out to all staff too, okay? So you should now see Cami assignment as an option. You're gonna click that. And then it's, it looks kind of similar to a normal Google Classroom assignment. You say which class, all students or some, give it a, a title, Cami Elementary Test. Maybe I'm going to say read and annotate, give it points, due date, all my typical options. And then here is where I can actually attach, either from Drive or from um, an attachment. And like I said, some people did run into issues because um, somebody was saying they like to, in one Google Classroom assignment, have several files attached. Um, so they wanted to have a PDF for the kids to annotate and also a slideshow for the kids to look through. But they, it, they give them, it gave them an error because cam, a CAMI assignment will not recognize or work with anything but a PDF. So you have to only attach a PDF. So let's do this one again. And now you'll notice it defaults to make a copy for each student. And that's definitely recommended. Otherwise, you're going to have all your students trying to mark up the exact same PDF, which maybe that's what you want, so you can change it. But normally, probably, you want each student to have their own copy. All right. So then I will click Assign. OK, Assignment created. So my part for the moment is done. I am going to switch now to a different screen and present to you a student view. So I think it's that one. Okay. All right, do you guys see, let's see. Okay, do you guys see a rainbow class with a little blue E in the top right corner? Yeah, okay, great, thanks. So this is my test student. It's a test elementary school account. So your test student will go to their Google Classroom. I'm just gonna refresh it here. All right, so they can see now in their stream or they'll see it in classwork also that their teacher, Alicia Dual Me, posted a new assignment via Cami. So they'll know it's like a Cami assignment because it'll automatically say via Cami. Okay, that's how they know it's a Cami assignment. And then I titled it Cami Elementary Test. So the student will just click on it. They'll see, they'll see the directions, which is to read and annotate. And then over here, they'll see the attachment and it'll be a PDF. Now, the student will click on it and it'll open in preview mode. And since all students now have this little purple K um, extension installed, they now will have this option, open with Cami. If they do not see this option, um, normally I would say they have to go and install the extension, but they all have the extension installed. So really, there shouldn't be any students that do not see this. All right, so they'll click open with Cami. And then you'll notice it looks exactly like the interface we just used as teachers. And so depending on what they wanna do, they can mark it up, annotate it, add text, whatever. I'm just kind of doing little things. They can even make comments if they want to for you to see if they're like, I don't really understand this one, they can do that. So students will mark it up. Um, and then this is the brilliant part. When they're finished and they're ready to actually submit their assignment back to you, look up here at the, in the very top in the blue um, banner, it says turn in. Okay, everybody see that? 
So they will click turn in. And I also, in that video for students that I made, I show them this as well so they can see. So then they'll see, they just have to click turn in and they'll see it's saving. So it does automatically save. Oh, and I have the first time they might have to allow oh, so many little test accounts here. There we go. Okay, so now it's saving. And then it'll switch to say turning in. And then done. So now they can see it's done, it's submitted, and they can even unsubmit it if they need to. They could download it or whatever, but their part now is finished, okay? And then one more time, I'm gonna flip back to the teacher view so that you guys can see what it looks like for, for a teacher view. Okay, go to that. All right, so now I'm back in the teacher view. Do you guys see rainbow class again? Yeah, okay. Uh, so now I can go, I'm just gonna go to grades and I can see here's my most recent assignment that I just assigned. I'm gonna click there and I can see that three students are in my class that had it assigned to them. One student has turned it in. So I'll click on that one student. And, oh, there we go. And I can see, here's their annotations, okay? I can see the name of the student, ES test student. Now, when I think the first time you guys use this, it'll look more like this where it doesn't look like you're in the Cami interface at all. There's nothing you can do to this, right? You can just look at it. You can uh, give it a grade and you can add private comments. So I think default, the first time you use it, those are your options. Private comments, give it a grade. There is this other really cool feature called grade with Cami. So you might have to actually check it. When you check it, and then it'll just stay, it'll stay checked forever until you turn it off again. Um, so now I can actually mark it up and grade it in Cami. So here's where the middle school teachers got really excited because in addition to being able to add private comments and grade it, they can make comments. Oops, I don't want that, sorry. They could actually add comments um, to the finished work. Nice try, very close. So this is just another option for grading, adding comments, voice comments, video comments, text comments. You can, um, you know, maybe in a different color, correct some of the things that they did. Um, so you yourself can then annotate it in Kami, in Kami as a, um, when you're grading it. And then again, super cool integration. When you're finished and you wanna send it back to the student so they can see their grade, they can see any markups that you made to it, you click return right here and then return and that's it. So that's the flow of how to use Google Classroom with Kami and do everything kind of within the Kami environment. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to open it up again to questions or comments or if anyone has ideas for how they might use it or how they have used it. Let's hear it. Or questions. Um, Max, just a comment about the text to speech voices. See that. Um, Google US English has better intonation and phrasing than the default robot voice. Got it, good to know. Thank you.
Any questions or, or ideas, suggestions for how you might use it? Um, so like I said, there, there is a Google playlist or a YouTube playlist on our channel. And um, it talks, it shows how to do the Google Classroom assignments, how to create and submit annotation features. So this is just kind of detailing all the different features. Um, and then again, there's the four students, how to use Cami. And this text plan, this is the middle school one we did last week. So this text plan will be there as well um, at some point. So that's pretty much it. Um, somebody did ask me if this, these text slams would qualify for any CPDUs. I'm getting information on that. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to find out, so I will let people know. Um, this one, this CAMI text slam will be repeated um, for, at two o'clock. So if you have friends that you think might want to join, um, you can mention that to them. And then on Thursday, we're doing the same thing. Fingers crossed we'll do Zoom, um, but I will have to see how that's um, shaking out. We're really hoping that that will be ready really soon. Um, so if, if Zoom's not ready for Thursday, we'll do a Seesaw one and we'll kind of go through like all the different Seesaw tools and um, some of the features in the Seesaw Premium. So that's about it. Um, but feel free to send me a Hangout anytime, send me an email. I'm just always here kind of basically to support you guys at all times. So thanks for coming and uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you. <laughs> thanks.